what do you think about the Bitcoin dominance being where it is right now? Because in the past, when it's been this low, it means it's near a top. I not I wouldn't use it as a top indicator. Um, it might be a top for altcoins, but uh, like it doesn't even seem like that either. Um, so I, I wouldn't use it for anything like that, and I wouldn't use it to look at the history and go, oh, this was a top in 2017 because 2021 is completely different. Um, so yeah, I don't think it's useful for finding tops. You're, you've talked before about the, the difference between there's going to be a parabolic blow off top. Ivor Lynn has asked if you think that there's going to be a parabolic phase or do you think that there's like a macroeconomic shift that could take Bitcoin into a bear market? Um, just kind of your general thoughts about the future yeah, of the I, Bitcoin market and how it ties to macro. I don't think we'll get a um, parabolic um, blow off top. Um, and I think we're like we saw with this rounded top here is a sign of things to come because the the market's very sophisticated now. You don't really see blow off tops in you know equities. Um, you see it in um, you know penny stocks. You'll see it in um, you know altcoins. You'll see it in Bitcoin when it was very young. Um, but now it's much more sophisticated. Um, a lot of money to be done taking the short side as well when it gets overheated. So. Um, yeah, I, I think we'll get more rounded tops. It, it will start to look more like um, the larger markets, like the equities markets moving forward. I, I'm not thinking, like, I think of these predict predictions of 400,000. Um, they're contingent of a blow-off top, um, like this top model here. You seem to hit it on a blow-off top. Um, and so that target right now is in the 210,000. Um, but it, I'm not sure if I'm going to get a blow-off top anymore. I'm looking at this kind of stuff and... This, this, I mean, the FOMO in here was comparable to the FOMO in here, right? Um, we were around, we saw it. Um, and then we got a rounded top as the big guy started to dump and divest over a distribution top. Um, you know, Ruffer started selling. There was a number of people selling. We saw a lot of red dots in the whale, the whale tracking heat map. Um, and I think that that's a sign of things to come. Yeah, that was also the one of the biggest challenges Bitcoin's ever faced in its history was the China Bitcoin ban. So it did shake a lot of people's confidence. Yeah, except a, except for Willy Wu. Willy Wu was still confident. <laughs> yeah, it was like it was, it was a very patient kind of sideways reaccumulation, wasn't it? It took ages. That's what would it take for you to reduce your position at this point? There's lots of people asking that general question about like, <laughs> it seems like there's people that are thinking, is it, is it going to stop? Or is the bull market going to stop? And how do they tell? And what would you do? Um, like, I'm not you, right? And everyone has their own strategy and their own risk tolerance and their own um, ability to act with short timing. And so you should always take a long-term view and you should always uh, like, you know, have a plan that suits you. Um, what I do is really specific to, you know, my job I, is really looking at markets all the time. So when I see bearish phases, you know, I'll, I'll sell immediately because it's, you know, a big chunk is my trade account on, on exchanges. And so I move to cash and the rest I let ride because that's my sovereign stack. Um, that, and then, you know, I'm constantly taking profits to cash and then I'm, you know, putting into cash yield and other investments. So I try to keep a very sort of um, specific portfolio, always a minimum of 10% in cash. And I said last time, you know, that cash is for um, IQ protection. Like in, in a down market, you want to retain your sanity and your ability to think. And when you have zero cash, when the thing's crashing, you tend to lose it. And you probably find that um, your IQ drops and you won't be able to have a rational decision at the bottom. It'll be emotional. So um, I always keep 10% in cash. Um, the amount of exposure I have will vary depending on, you know, the price action regime. And it swings massive. Like I could be like, like here I was very much leverage, you know, and then um, I went to cash around here, around the time I sent out that we're going into multi-months of beer around there. Um, I went to cash People sometimes think I sold the top there because they think I'm some sort of, you know, legend or something. But no, it was. It took a while for the on chain to go. Yeah, this is screwed, and um, I sold to cash. Um, but that was just my exchange account. Um, and like, yeah, so that's my plan. And if we start to enter any kind of phase that looks um, like 
long-term topish, I might move my cash positioning to 15%. When I say cash positioning, I mean not the cash sitting on exchange that can go back into Bitcoin at a drop of a hat. This is going and being deployed into that um, cash instrument that's generating a yield, that, that hedge fund, this or that. So um, that stuff's much, you know, they're kind of on a monthly schedule that the windows are open to put money into those kind of instruments um so that's my plan it's not like it's not like the 2017 plan the 2017 plan was ride this up and not trying to tighten the top wait for this 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 dead cat bounce whenever it crashes there's always one bounce wait for the dead cat bounce and then look at the market structure and the market structure here was bearish because the the volume had dropped away from the blockchain so that was my plan, which I executed. I sold around 12,000, 11 to 12,000. Um, it wasn't the 20,000, but at least I didn't sell here, trying to time the the like 10,000 top. Because a lot of people thought 10,000 was the top. I didn't sell the 7,000. I just said, I'm not going to try and time it. I need a solid signal. And then I sold all of it. And then I waited till here um, into this zone here I accumulated. So, I mean, just have a plan that suits you. Like, um, and I think I was the only one that was trading NVT at the time. So that was a signal that was more likely to work because no one else was like looking at it. Um, now I'm more measured. I'm just going to diversify and keep cash. And I, I, my, my view of it is that we're entering a um, the last cycle. I mean, this is going to do a drunken wander upwards like this and not look like um, your four-year parabolic. Like, you know, the vertical reds are the halvenings and we have like that kind of one, two, and then we one's mm. expecting a three and a four. I'm going, <laughs> no, I think junk can walk all the way up till um, we reach the, the million, the million or the 10 million or whatever the saturation point gets to. And so that just takes a different strategy for me. Um, Do you think we would see an 80% uh, drop in the bear market or in the bear Yeah, markets? well, we've seen that the 50% pullback is um, that we just saw here. That was a 50%, really, um, 60 to 30, a um, bit more than 60%. Similarly here in COVID flash crash, right? Um, so, and again here, 6,000 to 3,000. So I think that that's starting to show as a 50% seems to be where the liquidity is found in a liquidation event. Um, all of the pullbacks to date have been liquidations. Thank you, futures contracts. So it's not spot sell-offs. And so it's even a different mechanism. Um, and so that seems like a nice one. Well, I, I could see it being, a, maybe we, I could see it being an 80 to 85% pullback in a total um, liquidity failure. But in that case, I, I'd expect it to spike up pretty quick. You know, it probably 50% is the long-term daily draw, draw down. 85% might be in a work if like some exchanges completely shit themselves. Um, but yeah, um, certainly not. I think the main thing is not the drawdown, but how long does it take to recover? Like, should it take this over one year, like we saw here and here, or is it like three or four months? I don't think we'll see the one year recoveries and pullbacks. Before we continue, help us clicking that YouTube like button and subscribe now to our channel. This shows the algorithm that you valued this information, and it helps us spread that message. Sharing is caring. And now, let's continue. Do you want to know one thing about crypto? I made over 3000% in profit in a few weeks. Fact is, the traditional financial system, the traditional money system makes you poor, not rich. If you want to earn $500,000, $1 million, you have to wait until you're 50, 60, 70 in the traditional financial system and you probably will still be broke and you will be old. This is not a sexy combination as you can imagine. But the question is, how can you start in crypto and make these profits? Where to invest? Where do you start? My name is Gunnar and I'm from Germany as you can hear and things are a little bit different in Germany. More about that later on. The fact is, there are lots of different cryptocurrencies. It's a gigantic universe where beginners and professionals get easily lost. But there is light at the end of the tunnel. There are seven key steps you need to follow to become successful in this market. You have to know them. And if you fail one of them, it's literally impossible to succeed in this market. Just an example, one of the key points is your exchange. And one of the biggest are, for example, Binance and Coinbase. These are trusted and well-established exchanges. But, and this is a big but, 
you won't find the super profitable coins on those exchanges. The unknown super profitable coins that get gigantic profits are not traded on those kind of exchanges. They are traded on much smaller insider platforms that are barely known. And I can tell you what those super secret exchanges are and why they are so profitable. And another super important thing are the right information sources. The point is, the internet is gigantic. There are hundreds and hundreds of YouTube channels, blogs, pages and much, much more. And there are also market makers and influencers. For example, Elon Musk, he is not a crypto guy. But the moment he recommended Dogecoin, it went through the roof, to the moon so to say. But why did he recommend it? Where did he hear it from? He didn't hear it from newspapers. And believe me, he is listening to someone. But you have to know who and you have to react before he is reacting. This is really, really important. And these are only two of the seven steps you have to follow in order to be successful in crypto. And if you want to know all of these steps in much more detail, and if you want to have a comprehensive checklist, Here's what you should do. There is a link below this video. Click on this link and you will get the opportunity to subscribe to my channel. Click on the link and you will see a video where I explain the next steps. So see you soon. Click on the link now. I'll see you there.